Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have Halloween Dollar Tree DIYs for you. My theme today is black and white. I love that for Halloween, but I'm going to mix in burlap too to see how that looks together. So the first DIY, I want to make a set. So I'm going to do two different ones that are going to hang together in a set. And what I want to do with this is a pair of bat wings. I think that's going to look really cool hung together. And I want to make the bat wings out of burlap. So I am going to take one of these little burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. I love crafting with these. Super easy to cut and they don't fray. Even though I think this might look a little bit better if you used real burlap. Um, you, know, you can decide once you see how this looks. Now I needed to... Um, you know, plain signs that were about the same size. And I do have a set of these from Dollar Tree. Um, you could pretty much use anything. You're probably gonna want like a rectangular sign like this. Now these have frames, but it's totally not necessary for this if yours don't. I just went ahead and taped all of my frames off so I don't get any paint on them. And then I'm just gonna use white acrylic paint and we're gonna paint that entire brown sign in the background white. Now the acrylic paint is rather thin, so I am gonna have to do a couple of coats to get good coverage here. And what I wanted to do was a white background with black bat wings on this one, and then I thought it'd be fun to make the black bat wings out of burlap. And I'm also gonna add a few more burlap touches to this. It actually ended up turning out really cute. Um, I'm glad I did it. I'm just gonna do like the wing parts, but like not the body. And I'm gonna hang them as a set for Halloween. I really love like black and white together for Halloween. I just love that. I think it looks so cool. And I think burlap just naturally kind of goes with it. So that was my theme for all of these DIYs today. Gonna go ahead and remove all of my painter's tape. I was just using Dollar Tree painter's tape. It didn't work perfect, but it worked pretty good. So I can just switch to a tiny brush and touch up any areas that might've been missed. To give it like more of a professional background. You could always use some of the removable white wallpaper from Dollar Tree too for the background if you wanted. They have like the white board. Now I cut out the front and the back of the little burlap bag and I just want sheets. So on those, I'm gonna draw on the back and I kind of looked at a bat wing. It has a dot here, 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 and then the bottom has a lot more dots, little sections. So I kind of dotted out where I wanted them to be. So I'll use most of my burlap and then I'm just gonna connect it. It's all super easy. Everything's kind of arched except for the top one, which is kind of arched out. So I just used a picture for reference on my phone, but you know, as long as you have all these little sections in the, in the bat wing, it is gonna look pretty good. Now I just put them face to face so that I could cut out like a mirror image in reverse. So I could just go ahead and cut this once. And this is one reason I love crafting with these burlap bags is that they're so easy to cut. So that looks pretty good. Now I don't want my bat wings to be brown though. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint my burlap. So I'm just using black acrylic paint and I am going all over. I'm using a foam brush to try to get it down in the burlap. I did notice my bat wings were a little splotchy in the end and Originally, I thought about using one of those little Dollar Tree rollers, um, and I kind of wish I would have. I might have got a little bit more of an even coat, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here on the second one. And it's going to be really kind of a simple um, effect with just the two black bat wings, but I kind of like that. I love the simplicity of the black and white together without all the colors like interfering with it. So I went ahead and did one coat on both 
and gotta be kind of careful drying this since it does have plastic backing. And we can go ahead and start setting up our first one. We're just gonna have it come from the side like that. And I did a really good job of filling up most of our little background sign there. And I just do a thick coat of Mod Podge all over the back. Cause again, it's plastic. I didn't really wanna melt that with hot glue. And then I am going to just sit it right here on our sign, gluing it down, trying to make sure all the areas are secure. Easy peasy. Now we just have to do the same thing here for the second one. I do a nice thick coat because um, I'm gonna be hanging these on the wall. I wanna make sure they don't fall off. And you also have that plastic on there. So I don't know if that interferes with it. Now my advice is definitely line them up like this so you will get them even when you go ahead and put that down because you do have a little bit of play with the plastic backing on there that you can kind of move it around a little if you need it. That's when I kind of noticed some blotchiness. So I went in and just kind of touched it up a little bit here and there. But again, you might want to use a roller if you have one. I have those really cheap rollers from like the Dollar Tree for $1.25. But that's how it looks so far. Now I wanted black, white, and burlap. So I have the burlap wings, but I also wanted like the burlap color. So I'm gonna use some of those burlap trims from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to hot glue that onto my frame all the way around. I really love these little burlap trims. They come with three different kinds on a roll. And I kind of wish they would package them separately because when you want to do a project like this with all the same, you got like, I ended up having to use like three packages. Two of them might've been partials already, but they have one yard of each on there. And so I do definitely want them to all be the same. And I'm just gonna keep hot gluing those around. And I'm really glad that I added that touch to it. I think it gave them a lot more character because the frame itself was a little bit plain. And that's why I said it doesn't really matter if you have a frame because you could still frame them out with burlap like this and um, you're gonna get pretty much the same effect. These already have hangers like built into the back of them, these little blank signs from Dollar Tree. So I think these two are ready to go. And this is how they turn out. I don't have them hanging up yet, um, but I just kind of set them up like this so you can kind of see how they look. And I think it's a really fun idea for a very simple Halloween DIY. And definitely have to display those as a set. Now our next DIY, I want to um, use one of these little black frames from the Dollar Tree. I thought black would be great because um, the black, white, and burlap, right? And we're gonna use a burlap canvas and I want to paint a really cute white ghost on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the back, the glass, all that from the frame. Not gonna need the glass because we're going to replace that with the burlap canvas. I do have to get rid of the staples. My advice on getting rid of those is to bend them back down before you pull them out because sometimes those Dollar Tree frames can break. Now they also like to fall apart on the corners when you force a burlap canvas in them. I know from experience. So I'm just gonna use my staple gun and go all the way around and staple to reinforce each corner. I like the fact that it's black. I think that's super cool. It does look a little bit plasticky and I do end up painting it black just to kind of get rid of that sheen. Now I'm just gonna use this little metal ghost from the Dollar Tree as a stencil, but a ghost shape is pretty simple. If you don't have one, you can kind of make it your own too. So I just lay that against my burlap canvas and I'm just using a white paint pen to trace that out. I can also trace out where the eyes and mouth are gonna be. And it gives me this really cute, kind of cartoon cute ghost for our little sign. And then I'm just gonna go in with some white acrylic paint and I am going to paint that all in. I used a little brush because I kind of wanted to go around the little details here of the face, but 
It did make it a little bit more time consuming. But I'm just going to go all the way around all of that. And like, it'd be really cute if you did like a ghost with a tail too. If you were going to like freehand it or use any kind of a stencil. This one's just kind of got like a wavy sheet bottom, which is fine. Because I just wanted a really simple little silhouette of a, of a ghost. I think this would look really cool with like a white skull on it as well if you wanted to do the skull root. And they do have the metal um, skulls at the Dollar Tree too if you want to use it as a template. I'm going to have to try to get the paint off of my ghost um, from just using it as a template. I did get some white paint on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of our little ghost. Whenever you're working with real burlap like this, it's really kind of hard to get good coverage. I do touch it up here in a little bit with a second coat because I felt you could see too much of the brown burlap through it. Now to attach it, I just do a bead of hot glue all around the inside of my frame and this one fit perfectly in there. So this is what we have so far. You wouldn't have to replace the back if you were just gonna hang it on the wall. I want mine to be a standing um, sign, so I just put hot glue all on the back of the burlap canvas and then just lay the existing back panel of the frame on there and we can stand it up. So that part was really easy. This is when I was like, you know, I really don't like how much of that burlap I can see through there, so definitely a second coat of white acrylic was needed. And I was kind of, kind of leave it like this, but I thought it was a little bit too plain. So I'm going to take it up a notch. The first thing I do is I did a couple of coats of black acrylic on the frame. It's just going to give a matte finish where before it kind of had a little bit of a plastic sheen. And as you can see, that really makes a big difference. And then I'm going to use some of that leftover um, burlap bag to make a little banner. I also thought it would be cuter with his eyes and mouth colored in black, right? So I'm just going to use a black paint pen and go in there and color that in. And I'm really glad I added more details to him. He definitely needed more. So a super easy little ghost face. And this was just the bottom of that burlap bag that we used for the bat wing. So we might as well use all of our craft material. And I just want a little piece to make a little mini banner because I thought it would be cute if he was holding like a little pennant banner in his hands because he is a little plain there. So I just cut out a little rectangle of that leaving a seam on one side for the top of the pennant. And I'm going to go ahead and paint mine black just for a little bit more contrast. So I just use black acrylic painting it very similar to the black bat wings. Then once it's dry, I can go in and just start cutting out little triangular pieces. I only need three, so I'm just going to go ahead and use one as a template to cut out the other two, making sure they're all shaped like triangles. And then I wanted just to put the word boo on there. I think it's going to fit perfectly. The only problem I had was Using my white paint pen on the black, didn't want to really make it pop too much. And so I did try a couple coats. I did notice that it was still kind of fading into the black. So I went in with a tiny brush and some white acrylic just to try to make it brighter. I really wanted that contrast of the boo. And then I'm just gonna string that on the front of the ghost canvas like he's holding it with both of his little ghost arms. And even with the acrylic, I did have to go over it a couple of times. Definitely painting on the black burlap was a little challenging. Now for the string, I'm just going to use some Dollar Tree twine. I think that's going to be the perfect size for him. And I really love the absence of color on this project. So I just cut out a piece that's long enough. And I'm just going to kind of drape it by attaching it with hot glue to the top of both of his arms and letting it drape down. I didn't want to keep a very even shape, so I do kind of tack down that little area in the middle with a little bit more hot glue to kind of give it the art shape it should have. And once I get that where I want it, I can go ahead and attach our little mini pennants. 
so cute and I'm so glad I added this detail to him. It really made him. If you wanted, you could always do a scarier version of this. I kind of like cute Halloween sometimes, and this is definitely a cute Halloween. Just making sure everything is secure and even, and this little ghost burlap black and white DIY is complete. I think it's so cute, and it was really fun to make. And this is how he turned out. I really think the burlap mixed with the black and white is really awesome for Halloween. I'm definitely going to do a whole black and white area with today's DIYs. Isn't he cute? I love him. Okay, the next DIY was really easy because I found one of these little cathedral window signs from Dollar Tree that was already black. But you know what? It would be super easy to paint one of those black if you found one that was the wood or the white. But it just saves me a step. Now, I want to cover up where it says home. And I also want to add some of these really cute little wood ghost ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And so I just do a coat of white acrylic on both of our ghosts and on that little sign to cover up the writing that was already on there. I've noticed when I've removed that sign before, it leaves like a lot of like little nails and stuff like that and glue damage. So sometimes it's better just to go ahead and leave that on there and try to redecorate it to match how you want. Now I did forget to fill the little ornament hole. So I'm gonna flip that over, try to fill those up with a little spackle and maybe a little on the front too, to try to hide that. You could always do a little bow on there if that bothered you but they don't really need a hole on there because we're just gonna glue those onto the window like they're kind of coming out of the window of the house. So we do a second coat on both of those to get those that nice white color, make it pop. And I do wanna keep the black, white, and burlap. So I'm gonna use some of the burlap um, ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I guess it's a ribbon burlap roll. And it's a little bigger than what I need. So I'm just gonna cut it down to size. To get a nice square cut, the best way to do that is just to pull out a whole string and then you are going to be able to see that so you can cut straight across the burlap really easily. So I'm going to use that as a measure so that I can pull out another string here for the bottom part. Sometimes it's just tricky to try to get the right string. And then I am just going to keep cutting that down to size. I want to put the word hey boo on the bottom of that. I thought it would be funny. And I have some of those little galvanized metal letters that I think are going to fit on there. Now to glue it down, I didn't want any visible hot glue like melting through that. So I just did a thick layer of tacky glue and then laid the burlap right on top. Now, if you see these little galvanized letters at Dollar Tree, be careful. You're only getting half the alphabet. So you have to keep that in mind. And I'm going to spell out the word, hey, boo. It barely fits, but it fits. So I thought that'd be really fun. So to attach those, I'm just going to hot glue on each one of the galvanized metal letters. I'm just going to leave them the metal color. I think that's going to be a fun little contrast. And it doesn't really compete with the black and white and burlap theme that we've got going on. But I did have to put them right next to each other to get it to all fit. I guess otherwise you could just put boo. I put boo on my last go, so I didn't really want to do that again, um, just to mix it up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. I love that the cathedral window is already black, so we can just add the little white ghost to it. The CIY was so easy and it turned out so cute. I love these little ghosts. I have another project with those coming up later on in the video too. So I just do a little hot glue. I want them to look like they're kind of floating through the air. Like maybe like they just came out of the window of a haunted house. And here they are. I think they look super cute. Let me show you how these look. Hanging in my home. I love them. And if you can find one of the black cathedral windows like that, it's just kind of a no-brainer. It's perfect for Halloween. Hey, boo.
Isn't that cute? I've done, I think, a lot of different seasonal DIYs with those little cathedral windows. I always love how they turn out. Now, I found this burlap at Dollar Tree, and I was like, hey, it's perfect. Black, white, and burlap, right? It is striped, though, which is not, like, very Halloween, but we're going to make it work. I thought I could cover a Dollar Tree vase, and we could do a really fun black eyeball flower uh, arrangement um, with those fun flowers from Dollar Tree. So whenever you use this rolled burlap from Dollar Tree, it's all wrinkled and it makes it hard to work with. So one of the first things I usually do is go in and iron it. I have a Cricut Easy Press on my workstation, so I'm gonna take advantage of that, but it definitely makes working with it a lot easier. While that heats up, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to trim it down a little bit so I can get, you know, about the right size that we're gonna need. But I like to iron mine upside down so you don't get any of whatever design is on there. A lot of those burlaps have designs on them from the Dollar Tree now. Um, I don't want any of that coming on my iron. So just like before, I'm gonna, you know, measure how big I need and then pull out the string so I'll know where to cut that down to size. That measurement there is probably the most important going up and down. And then we're just going to simply attach the burlap to the vase with a bead of hot glue. And I decided vertical. It's a nice skinny vase. So I think the vertical stripe going up is going to look nice. And then I'm just going to wrap that around, hot gluing it to itself to cover this. Just a fun way to add a lot of texture and the black, white, and burlap to the, to the vase itself before we add all the flowers. Now, you know, it's really kind of hard to arrange in here, like different heights and stuff like that. So I end up using a little bit of Dollar Tree sand to um, arrange my flowers. And these are the flowers we're going to use. I picked up a couple bundles of these black roses that have eyeballs in some of them. They also have like spiders and like little creepy plants coming out of them. So I filled mine up about halfway with some Dollar Tree sand just to make it easier to arrange this. And I wanna use a couple of these bunches, so I want different heights. So on the first one, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those down to size. And those are gonna be kind of my lower row of my flower arrangement. And half of them have, I think, eyeballs. You'll notice that I um, end up switching out another flower arrangement to give this one extra eyeballs at the end. <laughs> But I really like the little spider picks and the little creepy like tree. I think that looks fun too. Once I got that all arranged, the bottom, I want it to be nice and tall. So I'm gonna use one without taking it apart. So easy peasy, all you gotta do is remove the tag and put that inside. It's kind of tall, so it's kind of right up next to the camera. Those eyeballs are a little creepy. And just arrange it until you are happy with it. Super cute so far. I was trying to think of a fun way to display it and I'll, and I'll show you what I ended up doing. But for now, this is how this flower arrangement turned out. You can see I did add extra eyeballs. <laughs> just because I needed the just plain black roses for the next DIY. I thought it would be cute to arrange it like on a tray with maybe another plant. And so I am actually gonna use a tray that I got at Target Dollar Spot. And this is the one I got there last year. It's for $5. I ended up not using it last year. It has the spider webs. But this year Dollar Tree Plus has something really similar. And I think the Dollar Spot has something similar again this year too. So I'm gonna sit our little eyeball flower arrangement on there. And then I found this at the Dollar Tree Plus for $3, a creepy plant that's got teeth. So I thought that would go perfect with the eyeball plants. And my son loves these like weird carnivorous plants and stuff like that. He has some really cool ones. So I think this will go good with it. Now it has a black and white pumpkin already. It's got polka dots and stripes. So that part's perfect. 
The only part I didn't like was the red flower. Even though it's a cool flower, it doesn't really go with my black and white and burlap theme. So I am actually just gonna DIY this. So I just removed the red flower. I can use that for something else and come the colorful leaves that were with it. But I do want the little teeth to use in my final design. Just removing all of the staples and everything that were in there. The bottom part of the pumpkin is perfect. So I thought we could use another one of these little black eyeball uh, rose arrangements to kind of place together to make a giant black flower. So it's gonna kind of coordinate with our color scheme. So I just take one of the black flowers and just put it on the existing thing. And that's the only one I really have to attach to. So the rest I'm gonna kind of have to attach with hot glue, but it ended up being pretty easy. So I'm just gonna kind of build these roses on top of each other until I can get a big flower like that was on there before. And I can also use like the little black leaves to kind of add to that too, to kind of give it more volume but I don't wanna use the ones with eyeballs. So that's how I ended up switching out some of the black eyeball flowers on that one with some, I wanted more of the plain ones to build this out. And I just kind of attached them to each other with their leaves and it ended up actually being pretty easy. So here's another black eyeball. I'm gonna to add to that one, pick another black rose and add it to this one. I know the bottom leaves have a little bit of color too, but I think that's okay. It's not real crazy. And this was a really fun find at Dollar Tree Plus. We finally have a Dollar Tree Plus in my town, but they script skipped right to Christmas. But I was able to find this a couple towns over at a Dollar Tree Plus that had a ton of Halloween stuff. So to reattach the little um, thing, the little teeth, I just use hot glue and kind of put it in the middle of the giant black flower that we created. Then I also have some of these little black tree pieces, so I thought that would be a fun touch to add to. I just add a little hot glue to those and add those to the flowers on the bottom just to make them look a little creepier. And I think this is gonna be the perfect thing to display on that little black Halloween tray from Target Dollar Spot with the little black eye roses. So it pretty much has the same effect as it had before but no red. I did have a few black leaves left over, so I thought I might as well take advantage of those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of glue those on the back too, just to kind of round that out a little bit. And I think that looks pretty cool. I think it's ready to go on the tray with our first one. And then I thought we could fill it up with a you know, some moss and some creepy items just to kind of finish that creepy Halloween vibe. Now I got these little furry spiders at Walmart um, for $1.98, but you could always use ones from the Dollar Tree. I was just trying to avoid glitter ones for this one. And um, I thought two of these would look really fun, kind of like just in the two areas that are kind of open here. But then I thought it would look even creepier if I used like some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree to kind of fill that out, kind of make it look like a mossy ground with the spiders crawling through it. So I have some leftover from another DIY. I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle some in there, filling up the bottom of the tray and then just laying the little black fuzzy Walmart spider right on top. And I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. And this little tray was so easy to put together and it's so fun. I'm gonna have to send a picture of this to my son. He is gonna love it. It's right up his alley, little carnivorous, creepy Halloween plants. And how cute is that little pumpkin from the Dollar Tree Plus? Super fun, and I finally got a reason to use that little tray I got at the Target dollar spot. Now the next DIY turned out really cool, but it was so easy to do. I found this little dish at Dollar Tree the other day, and I thought I can make a really fun little tray to go in my entryway, you know, to hold keys and stuff like that for when you come in the door. I always like to do something kind of seasonal for that. This one was black with like um, a, you know, shiny silver 
on the top of the legs and I just wanted kind of a matte black finish on this. So I'm just using black acrylic and just going over the top of all the legs and the little spider body just to make those parts look black. And we are gonna do the black, and black, white, and burlap theme even on this. So I'll show you how I end up doing it. The spider part, once it's painted, looks pretty good. Um, the little plastic bowl, though, looks like plastic. So we're gonna dress that up a little bit once we get this part painted and dried. And we're just gonna use some Dollar Tree burlap. So I'm just gonna use the burlap roll and we're gonna make a little burlap bowl to go right inside. It's gonna give it a lot more character, I think. So I just cut out a little square of burlap that's gonna be a little bigger. And then we can just glue that right down inside the bowl. It's gonna make it look so much more high end. Now to do that, I just used Mod Podge. I went ahead and put a hefty amount in there and just spread that all around with a foam brush. So I could really saturate the burlap because it's gonna need it to kind of form this shape of the bowl. But I want it fairly even too. So I got it all coated. Then I just pushed the burlap down inside, pushing it against the bottom and the edges. And then I kind of use like a baby wipe to kind of push that down in there. Then I'm gonna coat the top of it with more Mod Podge. You really have to saturate it. And don't worry, it should dry clear. I'm gonna make sure that all the different areas are attached so you can kind of see it taking that shape of the bowl. Once I dried it with my heat gun, it looks way better. And now we can trim off all of the excess burlap. You don't have to worry about trimming this off perfect because I am going to line this with a little white detail so we can stay with our color scheme today. Now, I did notice that some of the metallic silver was still shining through on my legs, so I thought it's going to definitely require another coat of black acrylic anywhere where that was kind of shining through. So I just kind of went through and touched it up and that definitely did the trick because I want the matte black finish. I don't want any of that metallic silver that was on there before coming through. Now for the white part of our DIY, I'm gonna use just some of the macrame cord from the Dollar Tree and we are just gonna kind of frame out the bowl with that. Kind of looks a little bit like a spider web too, so it kind of goes with the theme but it's gonna make this look a little bit more finished and it adds a little bit of the black and white to this as well. And easy peasy, this DIY is complete. It was so easy to do and it really turned out so cute. So here is our little spider bowl. Great for an entryway. I'm gonna use mine on my entryway table to like hold car keys and stuff like that. So here is kind of an example of how you could use yours. And I really love the burlap in there. It really made it look so much better than just the plastic bowl. And I really like the matte finish as well. I think that looks makes it look way nicer. And it's functional, so you have to love that, right? Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my private Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. You can find out when I post new videos and you'll get to see what everyone else has been crafting. We would love to have you. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, the next DIY I thought we could do a really simple bat reef. So I'm gonna use um, some of these little black felt bats from the Dollar Tree a Dollar Tree burlap bag, and one of the little black wood bead wreaths from Dollar Tree. I thought we could do a really simple little bat wreath. I'm gonna have a more complex one later on if you wanted to do a bigger one for your front door. So I'm just gonna cut down a rectangular size piece out of one of those little bags because I wanna have like a burlap border behind the bat. Now I wasn't sure what kind of glue to use on this. I probably should have used hot glue. I ended up using tacky glue and the problem with that is maybe I used too much because it did come through and 
It was kind of obvious on the front of the black felt, but that's okay because I have lots of these, right? So I'm just actually going to layer it and make it a little bit thicker, which I kind of liked that effect more in the end anyway. This time I switched to hot glue and that worked way better. And I just hot glued our two little felt bats together. Now I wanted to have like a burlap trim, so I'm just going to use the bat itself as a guide to cut out a trim. Like, I don't know, a quarter, a half an inch around there. The only kind of tricky parts were trying to go around like the little ears and stuff like that. And then again, I didn't really want like pointy corners. So I did try to round those off if possible. And then I want to hang the little bat down inside this little black wood bead wreath that I got at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited to find this in black. I thought that would be perfect for Halloween, but I guess you could probably paint any of the other ones too. But definitely a step saved. Whenever I see black things like this at the Dollar Tree, I think Halloween. So I just take some Dollar Tree twine and it was a little fuzzy, so I burnt the fuzzies off. I am gonna tie it off here on our little wood ring. I thought while I was at it, I might as well make a hanger for it too. So I'm just gonna knot like a little hoop hanger here, but leaving the long piece here where I can string the bat, suspending it in the middle of the reef. I want it to dangle down like right in the center. So I use a bead of hot glue here on the back of the burlap for the bat and just lay it right on top of that twine. Just exactly where I want it, then I can just trim off the excess twine. Now to decorate the top of this, I thought it needed a really cute little bow and I found the perfect ribbon at Dollar Tree. It is this white wired ribbon that has little black bats all over it. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a quick little bow. All you need is a zip tie. So you just kind of pinch it together to give yourself a little tail. And then you'll have to twist it if you have a pattern on this that is only on one side. Make a loop, pinch it in the middle, then make another loop. It's all still going the same way. Now I am going to go ahead and continue that. Everything is right side out and make two more loops for the back of the bow. I did have to twist it a little bit to get the ribbon to be the right direction for my other tail. And then I just cinch it all together with a Dollar Tree zip tie and pull the little tails down to the same size. I'm gonna trim those up. I don't want super long tails on these. I just wanted a really cute little bat bow for the top and it's perfect for our black, white, and burlap. So I'm just gonna take some more Dollar Tree twine and tie the little bow onto our wood bead wreath here. And then the only thing I'll have to disguise is the little plastic zip tie. You could still kind of see it there at the top. And I found the perfect thing to disguise that because I needed something kind of tiny. And then I remembered that I got these little black bat cupcake toppers at um, cupcake picks, I guess, at Dollar Tree that have little black bats on them. So I thought that'd be perfect. I just broke off the little like toothpick there at the end. It did leave a little bit of exposed wood there. So I did have to go in with some black acrylic and touch that up real quick. But then I'm just going to glue that right on top of the zip tie and it was the perfect little finishing touch. For this super easy little reef, I think it's so cute. It would look great anywhere for Halloween. And this is how it turned out and this is how it looks hanging in my entryway. I love it and I love those little wood bead um, reefs. How cute are those? It really doesn't look like something that you made with supplies from the Dollar Tree. And I really think that the burlap really goes nicely with the black and the white. Such a great contrast. Now the next DIY, I wanna take some of these black taper candles that I got at Dollar Tree and give them a little makeover. I saw some really cute um, black and white ghost candles that I wanted to kind of try to copy on these. I was reading that you could paint candles if you use like the Posca paint pens 
and that you can even burn them like that. That's what the internet says, so I guess we will see. I do have a set of Posca paint pens. Sometimes I get them on Amazon, and but the other day I actually got a whole box of them at Target. They were a little pricey to get the whole box, but if you go on Amazon, you can definitely just buy whatever color you want. And you know what? They did a great job painting on the wax. I was really impressed. So I just do a simple little sketch of a ghost, and I'm going to color it all in in white. And I just did little squiggly lines along the bottom, and I thought we would kind of alternate those all the way up, going different directions and stuff like that. Now I started with the eyes. I was just going to leave the eyes black like that, but it is a little time consuming to try to work around the eyes. So I ended up losing the eyes after a while because <laughs> I can always go in with my black Posca paint pen and paint those on as well. Now for the second row, I kind of alternated over here. I'm only going to do like two rows because you're really only going to be able to see these ghosts from the front. But I want them to go all the way up our little black candle. Now I got one done, so I'm going to kind of use that as a reference. Kind of copy the same rows. It can still be kind of crazy whichever direction you want your little ghost to be. But you know what? Painting a ghost shape is so easy. Once I get those all painted white and dried, then I went in with my black paint pen and just drew simple little eyes on each one. And that was definitely easier than trying to leave the little spots black. And then I found, you know, some of those black metal candle holders um, from Dollar Tree that I think are going to be perfect for these. I picked up two different sizes, so they'll be two different heights. So I can kind of display them together as a little set. And I'm so glad I decided to paint these candles because I think they turned out so cute. Look at them. How sweet is that? Now for the candle holders, I still wanted to keep the black, white, and burlap theme I've got going on. So I thought I would just cover the little poles of these little candlesticks with burlap. I thought the easiest way to do that would be to use some of these little burlap bags from Dollar Tree. I craft with these things all the time. I absolutely love them. And I just cut out the front until I would have a sheet to work with. I'm just gonna cut out a strip. It's not gonna take much to cover these because they're nice and skinny. And then just cut that down to size, trying to get a rectangular shape so my lines are kind of straight. To attach, I just do a bead of hot glue up my candlestick and lay the burlap right on there. And this was definitely a good trick to make these look more high end. It kind of gives you the same feel as wrapping them with twine, but look how much easier that is. I just glue it to itself after I've wrapped it all the way around to take the shape of the candlestick. And I'm just going to leave the top and the bottom of it black metal. That's perfect for Halloween. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the second one, just cutting out a little rectangular piece that I can cut down to size. The tops of these candle holders are different. I don't know why they do that. Um, but it's fine. I think it's going to make it look just even a little bit better because it adds a little bit of variety. So I just hot glue this one on as well, wrapping that around and hot gluing it to itself. This DIY was so easy to put together and I think these candles just turned out so cute. Now I wanted to try to encourage them to stay in place and like especially the large one that well is kind of large. So I'm going to use some hot glue to get that started. And I'll have to let you know how that Posca paint pen burns on the candle because supposedly it's supposed to be just fine. So I hot glued both in there and this DIY is complete. Let me try to show you how those candles turned out. So cute and such a fun, easy DIY for Halloween. So we have our little black and white ghost candles in our Dollar Tree black and burlap candlesticks. I love all the different kind of candlesticks they have at Dollar Tree now. They really actually have quite a nice variety and this is how they look together. Now the next DIY is um, an older DIY that I made previously on my channel but I wanted to show you 
how I put it together because it has the same colors. And instead of burlap, I used Dollar Tree nautical a jute rope. So I chose the largest um, wreath form from Dollar Tree and I wanted to weave the entire wreath form with Dollar Tree rope. So it's gonna take a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a lot of packages. I love it when I can find um, the Dollar Tree rope in the box at the Dollar Tree, because you can really kind of stock up on it if you need to. I start by hot gluing it just to the back there of the structure, just to get it started. And then we are just gonna weave. It's really um, kind of fun to make these weave. They are like, you know, time consuming when you weave a wreath like this, but it turned out so nice, I love it. So I just went under the bar and then I'm gonna go over the inside bar and then I'm gonna pull that back through. But I was just trying to make sure it's good and attached here. I actually used a little bit of twine to tie it off just because I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of pulling on it. I don't wanna pull that off. So I go around the pole and this time in the middle, instead of going under, I go over. Then I pull it under the outer one. Gonna reverse that, go under this time. And then over through, over the middle one and then under. You're just doing the opposite for each row. And then you're also gonna wanna keep it tight. There's all the little sections on there. So you're gonna wanna try to get as many rows in a section as you can to keep it super tight so you won't be able to see through it. You want it to be really nice and woven. And you can already see that great pattern forming. So I'm just gonna kind of squish here until I can't string anymore. Then I can switch to the next section. And that's about how far one package of rope got me. I just hot glue it to the back and then hot glue my next one right next to it so I can continue that same pattern of weaving. And then we're gonna speed this way up because like I said, super time consuming. Um, but I basically just do the same thing till I run out, hot glue it to the back, start a new one and keep the weave going. Now my plan on this is I wanted to do like a spooky forest wreath for my front door. And I actually made this two years ago on my channel and I'm still using it for my Halloween wreath because it is adorable. I don't wanna replace it because I love it. I burn off all the fuzzies on my rope once I got the whole thing woven. And then for the spooky forest, I'm gonna use a little black tree that I got at Target Dollar Spot. They do have these this year. I was just at Target today. This one's kind of a fuzzy um, material. The ones that they have this year are not fuzzy like this, but they look just the same. I'm just gonna remove it from the pot that it was in. I only want the spooky tree. And it's the perfect size to fill up this wreath. I kinda wanna hide the stem here on the back, but I want like all the branches to be visible on the front. So I'm gonna start here by hot gluing that to the inside, the back of the wreath. And then I'm also going to use some just excess rope that I had to try to hot glue to that just to have a little bit more to glue to, kind of making like a little handle down here to hold onto the bottom of the tree. And this is definitely held up well. Again, this is like the third year I'll be displaying this, but all these supplies are still available at the Dollar Tree in the Dollar Spot, so you should be able to recreate. Now for the branches, I'm just gonna hot glue the tips to my wreath form um, on the sides and the top, just to kind of keep this in place and exactly where I want it to be without having to tie that to the top of the wreath at all. Especially with these upper branches are really important to secure. So I just hot glue those to the woven wreath, which I think turned out so pretty. It was time consuming, but I think it was worth it. Now, if you wanted to stay with the burlap theme though, you could get a similar look by wrapping it with burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. But again, the rope is jute, so it's gonna give you the same feel. Now, I want this to look nice and creepy, so we're gonna use some Dollar Tree black bats. 
They are glitter, but we're gonna kind of make it work. These are the little clips. Um, I don't really need the clips on these. Um, so you can always pull those off and hot glue them on where you need. I want them to kind of look like they are flying away from the spooky forest. And then I wanted to use some of those cute little Dollar Tree ghost ornaments to decorate the tree and the wreath too. So I just pulled the pins off the back of these, the little clips, and then I just used hot glue to attach the bats. I want them to look like they're flying kind of in the same direction there. And hot glue those to the rope. And I did a total of four here all on the right side. Now I also wanted to have a sign, so I'm gonna use one of the little metal Halloween signs from the Dollar Tree. Honestly, any of these would be good. I decided to go with the word haunted. Kind of for the haunted forest, right? And then I thought we could hang these little ghosts all around like in our little spooky tree to make them look fun. Oh yeah, I, I switched it up and changed the word spooky. <laughs> Any of them would have worked. I just go ahead and paint all of my white ghosts. I'm gonna kind of do an ivory color on these, but you could totally do white if you wanted. I was using chalk paint just to try to make that stick to the galvanized metal sign a little bit better, but I wanted to stay with that black and white theme. So I wanted that to be white instead of the metal. So it did require a couple coats of chalk paint still, to get good coverage on that, but I wanted all my ghosts to be cute and ivory as well. Okay, let's put this together. These ornaments come with little hangers if you need them. So I'm gonna just string some of these um, into our little haunted forest tree. The shape on these are perfect. I love the way the bottom of these are like pointed and frilly like that. And then it's just a matter of figuring out exactly where you want your little ghost to be. Tied this one right down here. And then this one, I actually ended up using it more like it was com coming away from the tree a little bit. So I ended up attaching that one to the rope reef. Just hot gluing it to that. But I do want it to dangle down like that because I think that looks cute. And then I have enough room for Spooky at the top of our little wreath up here, off to the side. And I just use hot glue to attach that as well. And I think this is one of my like most reshared or most looked at pens on Pinterest. Everybody loves this wreath. So I wanted to show you it because I thought it totally went with the theme of the other DIYs that we made new today. Now for the ribbon on this, I'm gonna do the same kind of bow with a zip tie. This is the black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna make as many loops as I can to make a nice fat bow. And then I'm gonna cinch it all together with a zip tie. Right in the middle, this one's even easier because you don't have to turn it. The black and white gingham pattern is on both sides. So just like before, I pull my tails down to one side. And then I can trim them off the same length, dovetailing them if you want. I wanted a nice, fun bow to go on the bottom of this wreath. They are wire rimmed, even though they're from Dollar Tree, so you can shape it into a nice, giant bow. I'm gonna attach mine right here to the bottom by taking some twine and tying that to the bottom of the wreath. And I think that was the perfect final touch for this little Dollar Tree wreath. Once I attach it, I just arrange it and then use a little bit more twine for the top to make a very simple little wreath hanger just by knotting that twine. And this is how it looks on my front door for Halloween. How cute is that? I love it. I love the simplicity of the black and white colors and I think it looks great on my white door. 
Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that I've introduced memberships here on my YouTube channel for $4.99 a month. You can help support me here on YouTube. You're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos like this one and a few other perks as well. And I wanna give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bum members, Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctegal, Julie Miller, Nancy Wunner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. It helps to keep these videos coming. And now it's time for the final reveal. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Please comment your favorite DIY below. And don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. It's a rainy night coming lit out of the dojo No lights dark out on the parking lot Looking for my car, thought I left it here before Got a feeling that something ain't right Moving shadows, hear the sound of two feet See my car where my keys, kinda getting spooky Oh God, now it's coming from behind My cell is gone dead as I slowly turn around and oh, oh. Suddenly my brain's letting go and I laugh out loud as my elbows crash into an eyebrow Thinking what the hell I'm gonna make it somehow Run into a closed liquor store, break the window Grab a bottle of gin, take a swig, oh no Stepping on a slimy lump and no Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of today's video. If you would like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.